Okay, we're at section 9.5, collisions in two dimensions. And before we get to the, uh, the uh, PowerPoint, let me get to Mathematica. Oh, uh, where is it? Let's see. Uh, I think this is the, uh, this is it. Yeah, this is this. This is called collisions in two dimensions. They're also called glancing collisions. And uh, let's just run it. Uh, well, first, let's uh, put them at about the same, uh, uh, the same mass. Oh, there they are, 1.765 each. And uh, let's reset it and run it. And you can see what happens when they're not, you know, they're not in line with each other. You can see that they, they glance off each other and they go at different angles. And you can see that the angle is not, it depends on their masses. We, we change, I don't know if you can see the, the lines of uh, uh, the direction that they're going, but you can, you can see that if, if you increase the, uh, or decrease the orange mass, uh, the uh, uh, I should reset it. If we decrease the orange mass, the uh, the angles change. So let's play it again, and you'll see uh, the one mass doesn't. The angle isn't as great, whereas the orange mass is greater. Let's uh, reset that again and uh, uh, decrease the the blue mass, and let's see when they. Uh, the angle is such that it go, the orange one goes off at, at uh, uh, almost vertically, not quite vertically, but it looks like at about 75 degrees to 80 degrees. Uh, so the, the, the glancing blows, you can't, you know, you can calculate the, the, uh, the angles that they go off, but it depends on the, it depends on the, the masses that you're working with. So we're going to look um, look at the PowerPoint now. Let's see where that's there. Uh, so when you have two uh, collision in two dimensions, uh, you know, in one dimension they're they're all in the line. It's like the Walter Fent assignment that I've given you. That's all linear. They're all in the same line. You can vary the masses, but they're all on the same track. So it's uh, it's a it's a collision in one dimension. This is collisions in two dimensions. Uh, you have the we're going to keep it the, to simplify. We're going to keep it on a plane. So we vary. Uh, whereas in the collisions in one dimension, it was all uh, along the x axis. Let's say now we have the x and y axis, and we can see we have uh, m1 v1 x plus m2 v2 uh, V2 initial X equals M1 V1 final X plus M2 V2 final uh, uh, final X. Uh, so that's in the X. And in the Y, we have the same M1 V1 Y plus M2 V2 uh, initial Y uh, equals M1 V1 final Y plus M2 V2 final Y. Uh, so those are the equations that we set up. Now that's a lot of equations. So you're gonna to have to know, we've got multiple equations, multiple unknown, unknowns. So you're gonna to have to know quite a few of those before you can get the, uh, the an answer. Now this is a uh, kind of a drawing of what we were seeing, a little bit reversed because the, uh, the recipient was on above it, but it's the same concept and you can see that the angles one is labeled theta and one is labeled phi they're not going to be they're going to be they're going to depend on the masses of the uh, particles now it, it, we're assuming that m2 is zero so that simplifies things um as far as the momentum goes because you've just got m1 v1 initial if m2 is is, is v uh, initial is zero then it's it, it kind of simplifies things oops i didn't mean to hit that just yet let's go back um nope, too far okay um so the we know that the uh, we have conservation of momentum irrespective of whether it's elastic or inelastic um so we have the uh the sum of the 
momenta in the x direction is equal to zero and the sum of the momenta in the y direction is equal to zero. So the, what, that means that uh, the momenta x initial equals the momenta x final. And the same, the momentum y initial equals the momentum y final. Uh, so in the x direction, we have m1 v1 initial. That's the only momentum. Uh, it equals m1 v1 final times cosine of theta. And plus m2 v2 final times the cosine of phi. Uh, so that's the total momentum. Now in the Y, there was no initial Y uh, activity. So the momenta in, in the Y direction is equal to zero. So after the collision, we have M1 V1 final sine theta minus M2 V2, fi V2 final uh, sine phi. Uh, and the minuses here are just to, to, to the, the, v, the V1 and the V2 we have here are not vectors. So the minuses indicate the direction that we're traveling in. Now, if you have an elastic collision, then the kinetic energy is conserved. Um, initial kinetic energy equals the final kinetic energy. So you have one half M1 V1 initial squared. Of course, the M2 has no velocity, so there is no kinetic energy there that is going to equal one half m1 v1 final squared plus uh, uh, one half m2 v2 final squared where that um, that velocity is the vector uh, you know the magnitude of the vector component uh, i mean the magnitude of the vector uh, so it's the square root of the sum of the squares uh, and let's see so to, to we solve these problems, and I'll probably do an example uh, problem, in, you know, for you to look at. Uh, so you conceptualize it. You you decide what uh, what type, you know. Uh, where's my? There it is. You know, you just look, kind of draw the the collisions, kind of visualize where they're going to end up. Uh, it may be wrong, but it'll give you an idea. You you categorize it. Is it elastic? Is it inelastic? Is it perfectly inelastic? Um, and then you analyze. You 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 know if it uh, if it's an isolated system, you know the the uh, there's no impulse. So you write expressions for x and y, um, the momentum for x and y. Uh, you know for an isolated system, the sum of the uh, momenta is equal to zero. Uh, again, no impulse. So the equations will reduce to um, mom uh, initial momenta in the x direction equals uh, final momenta in the x direction, and momenta initial in the y direction equals mom uh, momenta final in the y direction. Um, if there's if there's no initial y direction, then the uh, initial y momenta is zero, and the you should, for the final y, you should get uh, the uh, you know the momenta in one direction equals the negative of the momenta in the other direction for it to equal zero. And then you just finalize to see if your answers are reasonable uh, for the problem, re reasonable and realistic. And that's all we're going to discuss. Next, we're going to discuss 9.6 center of mass.